1991, 18-year-old kid, getting drafted. He's supposed to be a catcher, yeah. ended up a first baseman, DH, <laughs> kind of bounced, ended up a Hall of Famer. Probably never imagined that uh, that might happen back then when you were 18. No, uh, actually I was 17. 17, <laughs> you turned 18 later. Yeah, 17 when I got drafted out of high school, and I'll never forget, I was in my baseball coach's classroom and I got a little pink slip before they had uh, you know internet and cell phones, and they told me to come to the office, and they told me that Mr. Art Stewart had called, uh, who's like a second dad to me, and uh, told me that I was drafted by the Kansas City Royals. And it's, uh, it, it was a long time ago, um, but the Royals have been such a huge part of my life. And uh, you know, the Glass family has, has welcomed me into, into this incredible Royals family, and they've treated me with, like royalty. And, um, and then having Dayton come over my last couple of years as a player and really just treat me like someone special. Um, I feel indebted and a lot of gratitude to this organization. Hey, we talk about the move from catcher to first base and the ups and downs. You had to fight through those things for your career to, to end up as long as it was. Um, I guess what kept you focused on the game and, and on your game and just having success? Well, uh, well Brad, the, the last two months has, has been the, the hardest two months of my life. Um, my, my father was diagnosed with esophageal cancer on New Year's Eve. And uh, growing up, you know, my dad, he's, he's always been my hero. And, um, you know, people ask me what, what got you through the tough times and what, why did you play the game of baseball so hard? And I, I mean, quite frankly, I, I did it to make my dad proud. And, uh, you know, he's up the street at the Mayo Clinic getting chemo and radiation right now as he's fighting for his life. And I was with George Brett yesterday when I got the news from Kurt. And uh, to, to receive that news with, with George, you know, the face of this organization and the first thing George told me is call your dad. And uh, to, to call my dad as he's going through this hardest time, um, it was it was such a great gift. So um, how did I get from being a catcher to, you know, uh, to a Royals Hall of Famer? Um, number one, it was just a love for my my dad and my mom. And I always, I always shared the story about my dad was a minor league ball player with the California Angels when he found out my mother was pregnant with the first of eight children. And he hung up his spikes to go drive a beer truck in Southern California. And um, to be brought into that family and raised in that family and, and be taught, you know, I remember as a nine-year-old boy, hit a ground ball to second base and uh, was upset that I was going to most likely be out. And I kind of half-heartedly jogged to first base. My dad grabbed me by the jersey and said, <laughs> if you ever dog it like that again, you're not going to play baseball anymore. So how did I come from a, a, a guy that was a, you know, not, not a great catcher my first few years in the big leagues to this. Um, a lot of hard work, a lot of perseverance, um, you know, never quitting. I, I was told I had, in 1999, I had a 0% chance of being a Kansas City Royal. I was gonna either be sent down, I was gonna be traded, mm -hmm. released, and uh, God had other plans for me. Mm -hmm. And Dayton, or I should say the Glass family had other plans for me. So the last two months have been the hardest two months of my life, but to receive this news on a, on a day like this mm -hmm. is, uh, it's the greatest news that a young man could ever ask for. You mentioned George. Uh, you're looking across the way at the Royals Hall of Fame names on that long line. You look at that list, White, Brett, hmm. Wilson, and you're going to be up there. How does that make you feel? Well, to, to be in any category with people like Dan Quisenberry, whose number I proudly wear, and Jeff Montgomery, who was one of the greatest teammates ever, and Kevin Apier, and, of course, George Brett and Frank White. I mean, it's very humbling. And... Um, there's no doubt that this will be the greatest honor that I will ever receive post-retirement. And um, it uh, means the world to me. It's uh, Like I said, the last two months have been the hardest time of my life. But um, every time you, you go through a hard storm in life, at times you, you need a glimpse of sunshine. And I, I feel like this is it. And uh, I'm hoping and praying that it will give me strength to get through the summer. And uh, hopefully my dad, too. Um, hopefully in July or August, the, the day that I get to go into this incredible Hall of Fame, that I'm praying my dad and my mom will be there with me. That's that's what's going to hopefully be the driving force to get us through this next few months. What's your most memorable moment as a Royal? Um, 
scoop a lot of a lot of memorable moments um i, I was just talking with mike jershley this morning and i as a 20 year old minor leaguer i was in uh short season a ball and i was expecting to go to full season a ball and get a 50 dollar raise a month and you know, head north with all my friends, and Mike Jershley took a, a, another catcher instead named Trent Hosworth. And I remember sitting in the dormitories in Baseball City, and I remember there were, you know, condensation on the windows, there were frogs on the windows sticking to the windows, and I watched 14 cars drive off in a caravan up to Rockford, Illinois. And as a 20 year old boy, I had tears rolling down my cheek, and I, I thought to myself, am I ever gonna play this game of baseball beyond short season rookie ball? And, um, you know, those days in the minor leagues of, you know, peeling yourself off the ground after an 0 for 4, you're, you're playing games in front of no fans at 12 noon. Um, that, that builds resolve and character and perseverance later in, in your career when you're told as a catcher you're never going to catch again. You got a 0% chance of making this team. Uh, you're gonna, if you do make the team, you're going to be the 25th guy in the team. And no one, no one really that year expected me to come out and play what the way I did, but inside of me, I did. Inside of me, I, I heard the whispers of my dad saying, son, you can do it. And uh, when, when, when the world counted me out, when uh, people said you couldn't do it, I always had that whisper and, and, the, and the memories of going through the hard times saying, you know what, you, you can do it. So as a, as a five-year-old kid putting on a baseball glove for the first time, and and, and playing the game of baseball because I wanted to make my dad proud. To, to know that 36 years later I'd be a, a Royals Hall of Famer, <laughs> oh, I, I, I could have never dreamt that. But today is, is a day that I'll cherish as long as I live. And um, to answer your question, Scoop, sorry to run off on a tangent. Probably the, the, the greatest memories of, of my Royals career, uh, certainly I had some great ones as a player, but being a part of the organization this past year, um, sitting there in Game Seven of the World Series with my dad before he was diagnosed and my brother, um, sitting with Dayton Moore and George Brett and the Glass family, watching, you know, forty plus thousand people pack Kauffman Stadium. I would like to say the proudest moment was a game-winning home run or a walk-off hit or uh, making All-Star games or stealing home, but it it was being a part of a winner in Kansas City. And ironically, I wore Dan Quisenberry's number 29, and it, it had been 29 years since the last World Series appearance in Kansas City. And, and me, a young kid that just played baseball because I wanted to make my dad proud, uh, one of eight kids from a family that had nothing, uh, it's, that, that, that is by far the most proud moment of my career. Mike, what was the conversation like with your dad when you told him the, news, the good news here today? Well, it, it was hard. He told me. He told me he's so proud of me, and uh, you know, I, I said, Flanny, the whole my whole life. That's why I played the game because my dad was my hero, and I wanted to make him proud. And to hear those words is, uh, he and my wife were the first ones I called, and the only ones I've called. And um, just to hear those words, and I, I told him the same thing. Well, I'm proud of you, Dad, and you know, let's get you through this cancer, and let's keep you upright, and uh, I want him to sit by my side that day at Coffin Stadium this summer. Yeah, thank you guys. Everybody good? Congratulations. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Thank you.